Well, what I noticed over the years when I started, of course, I wasn't, I was using bits and pieces of my handmade things, but it seems like people, the more of my own pieces I put in, um, the more the piece, uh, uh, people want the pieces that have a lot of my art in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting away from the stones because people are buying the, the bigger art necklaces. Uh, I think my style is getting more refined. Yeah, well, go ahead and pick it up. I think I, I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Because I showed the African beads in the back. Okay, you can put that back. And you did the piece that you like in the back. So reach in and get that. Oh, I got that one. And you can put that back. This one? And um Yeah, you did. I did that, that one. Yeah. That one I think that was might have been the first one. I was talking about the glass. Okay. And the bead work. Mm -hmm. That's an example of a bad, bad cut, which does happen sometimes. That's a good cut. So basically, uh, sometimes I measure, and sometimes I use something that I already have to, uh, you know, use as a reference. And I have to cut the base pieces. This is for making earrings. So we'll pretend that those are what I did. And I actually would get it a little better. OK. Where did you get the idea to start fusing the glass? Well, you know, uh, I've been doing this for about mm, 14 years, and right now, fused glass is, is very popular. A lot of people are doing fused glass. When I started it, it was just coming into its own. But I love glass. That's just, I love clay and I love glass, and that's why I have gravitated toward both of those. And uh, I believe, I'm hoping this is a new canister. I hope this is the one that I just bought because this is map gas. Uh, I don't have, I'm not set up for propane uh, fuel, which you can have a big tank of propane fuel and that'll last longer. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good with having that kind of gas in my house. So I'm happy with my map, my map canister. Uh, it, it'll last about 25 minutes. Uh, and then it'll go cold, and then I have need to finish my bead. Then it'll run out. But that's good enough for what I'm doing. Um, so let me turn it on. First thing I have to do is heat up my mandrill. It has to be hot enough to accept the glass. So I heat this up. It's going to get red at a certain point. And at the same time, I'm going to start heating up the glass. You have to be careful. You don't want to heat it up too fast or it'll chip off and, and it could uh, flick onto, your, onto me. You see, I don't know whether you can tell that's getting red. When it's red, then I can start putting the glass on and I'm waiting for the glass. The glass has to get red also. So you continuously move this mandrel until the whole section is hot and ready to get the glass. So now I'm going to put the glass lower down because I need that to have hotter heat. The mandrel is ready, so now I'm getting the glass ready. You can see it's turning red and it's going to get soft and i got to turn both of them you have to keep turning them as you're making it. 
You have to keep the, uh, the heat consistent on the glass. If I take this out of the flame now, it'll get hard immediately. So I'm going to start adding it to the mandrel. So you start wrapping it around. You feed it on. And you just keep feeding it on until you have the amount of glass that you want on there. And the more you have on, of course, the bigger your bead's going to be. You have to be careful. You want your the ends to be good. So you, you keep adding on from top to bottom. I'm keeping the mandrel close to the flame. I don't want it right in it, but I want it to be close enough so that it's still hot enough and, and the, the glass will be uh, not fracturing. So you kind of wind the glass on until you get the amount on that you want. And I'm turning the mandrel the whole time. You have to keep the whole piece heated. So you have to keep turning it, because you don't want one side hotter than the other. Now at this point, I'm going to add another color to it, but I'm, I'm going to kind of get it in there and while I'm heating this up. And I always heat the, the, the new glass high. You don't want to put it hot immediately or it'll, um, it could flick off on you. But you can see this bead here is, is safe as long as it's in that heat. Now while I'm, I'm going to bring this down a little higher, the area that you have the, the glass on in your flame, there's different hotnesses. So up here is less hot than down here. And while I'm working with this, I move that up. And I'm going to get this. You see how this is starting to get round? Uh, the, the way you get your bead round is by turning it. I'm eventually going to flatten it because I like flat beads. But you can have a round bead and you can make it any shape you want it. So this is getting close to where I need it to add to the other bead. It's getting hot. This is an adventuring brown, so it has gold flecks in it. It's very pretty with that uh, ivory color. So I'm going to start adding some of this. I'm just, I'm not, you know, I don't like patterns, so I'm going to end up doing something with this. I'm going to, I'm letting this melt in now. So I'm keeping 